Hey everyone, it's Gary House, the Outdoor Cook, the Cooking Everything Outdoor Show. And we're at the International Sportsman's Exposition in Sacramento, California. The largest sporting goods show in Northern California. We're talking hunting, fishing, camping, RV, and cooking. We're out of the backyard, we're on the road, we're showing you new products, new people, and really, really cool stuff. So stay tuned. Everything Outdoors show. I hope you try this at home. I'm here at the International Sportsman's Show and I'm with Chef John McGannon of Wild Eats. And Chef John, welcome to the Cooking Everything Outdoors show. Happy to, happy to be here, Gary. Thank Thanks. you. I've been coming to your booth for about four years now, looking at your stuff, watching the interaction, and checking out your spices, mm -hmm. tasting some of your food. So I'm very, very curious as how you got started in this. Well, we, we've been doing this. Wild Eats has been around for about 16 years. Um, I've been a chef for 37. I graduated from the Culinary Institute back in New York, and uh, I've opened 13 restaurants around the United States and wow. Hong Kong, Alaska. And about 16 years ago, I, I got so frustrated listening to my fellow sportsmen blame their culinary shortcomings on the poor animals. It was always the duck's fault or the deer's fault or the antelope. And I finally realized that there's, there's a whole section of our of our society that is uninformed or misinformed uh, with how they handle their, their wild game meats. And everybody wants to soak it in the big magical, what I call the culinary band-aid. Well, it, what we need to do is we need to, we need to heal the wound and get rid of the band-aid so that these pieces of, uh, of wonderful protein can be meeting their maximum potential. So I, uh, I started out, I, uh, I actually was on a plane, a plane ride back from Hong Kong, and this was in the beginning of uh, Cablevision. So I wrote, I wrote Charlie West, who had an outdoor gazette in the Bay Area. He had his, uh, a TV show. And I said, you know, everybody's doing these. We've got cooking stations for everybody. We don't have one for, for wild game people. So I wrote him a, wrote him a letter. Uh, long story short, six weeks later, I was up on uh, San Juan Islands filming 14 TV shows for the uh, called Outdoor Cuisine. And uh, that was kind of the, the initial onset of Wild Eat. So, uh, that was the beginning. We've now expanded. Uh, we have a line of seasonings and rubs. I have uh, six different blends. Uh, I also produce a, a lamb seasoning for Atkins Ranch, who supplies uh, Whole Foods throughout the United States with their lamb product. And I conduct uh, seminars at national conventions, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, uh, Mule Deer, Fanaz, and uh, we're, we're spreading the word. I have a column in the Bugle magazine called Carnivore's Kitchen, which uh, every, every publication we have a new kind of a, a why. My focus is on the why. Why do you do things? Because if you know why, you can always figure out how. Mm -hmm. So just shedding a little light and, and explaining basically the difference between these wild game meats and the domestic meat that everybody's used to. You can't, you know, you can't cook a, chick, a, a chicken the same way you would a pheasant or a deer the same way you would a, a fat laden uh, piece of beef or piece of pork. So right. understanding the different makeup and and explaining, and it's really been really rewarding the last 16 years at shows like this. I have a, a very strong following, and it's almost almost cult-like. It's kind of funny watching people come over, and they're all like, "Hey, there's your guy over there," and, and just having people come over and share their their experiences about based on what you know the information I was able to share with them. That's uh, very rewarding. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, most of us, we just go down to the supermarket and we pick up what's ever in the counter. Mm -hmm. And now you focus on wild meat, and for those that aren't, or wild game, for those of us that aren't hunters, how do we go about getting something like that? Well, there's, there's, a, there's several companies that um, raise, uh, domestically raise wild game animals, but it's really funny, the, the buzz in the supermarket industry these days is free range, organic, and natural. And we have we, people who have been out hunting We've been we've been reaping those benefits for hundreds of years, so it's a it's kind of everything has come full circle. Um, it's it's a funny dynamic. So that the, some people they think that you know meat is basically produced out of the the wrapper in the in the in the meat counter. Um, <laughs> they're out there running around, and uh, if you want to have lean, healthy, pure, you know, no antibiotics, no steroids, no none of those impurities that we are trying to avoid these days. 
uh, wild game meat is definitely the, the way to go. What's some of the other advantages of wild game meat? Well, to, uh, one, it's a, it's a richer meat, so you don't need to necessarily eat as much. You wouldn't sit down and eat a 16 ounce portion of, uh, of elk steak because it is so rich and it fills you up much quicker. So you don't have to eat as much. Number two, it's, it's at least half the, the fat and, and uh, cholesterol as uh, domestically raised animals. And uh, like I said, you don't, you don't have to worry about all those uh, uninvited chemicals and byproducts that find their way into our food systems. Sounds like a big win. Yeah. Now as far as cooking it, we're talking cooking outdoors. Yeah. What kind of ways would you cook it outdoors? Well, there's basically two fundamentals that you need to be aware of in uh, cooking wild game. The tough cuts need to be cooked as slow as possible. The tender cuts need to be cooked as quickly as possible. Because of the fact that it's, they're low in fat, they, they don't have the tolerance to be exposed to heat for extended periods of time. Fat in meat is basically the insurance policy against drying out. Mm -hmm. When you don't have that fat, you can't obviously cook that meat the same way you would if you did have the fat. So by simply adjusting your cooking techniques and using uh, really high heat and not necessarily having your meat so thick that it takes such a long period of time, the longer that meat is exposed to heat, the greater the amount of evaporation uh, be, and that natural moisture that's inside of that meat is what you need to keep it moist because of the absence of fat. Do you look for, like with beef, we look for marbling. Marbling is our tenderness factor, our flavor factor. How does that work in with... Well, marbling is a byproduct of uh, animals not getting enough exercise. Okay. So, you know, comparing a domestic cow to, a, to an elk or a deer or an antelope is like comparing a couch potato to an Olympic athlete. Um, there's a process called dry aging which uh, in, in the high-end restaurants and steakhouses throughout the country is how is you, you hang your meat and you allow that to evaporate the eternal moisture, you allow the capillary blood to drain out and then you get the most tender, delicate piece of meat that you can have. Um, now, in doing that, back in the days in New York when I was uh, running restaurants over there, we would, hang our, we would hang our strip loins for 28 days. Now that's wow. overkill on a domestic. But it's the only natural way that you can break down these highly developed muscle systems found in uh, wild game meat. So by dry aging it, and dry aging isn't something that has to happen before it goes into the freezer or after it comes out. It's, a, it's just a matter of allowing that capillary blood. The capillary blood that's found inside of muscle tissue is the broken down byproduct of what that animal consumes. And if you eat that meat in a very fresh state, you're going to be eating the, that byproduct. By simply allowing that to drain out, you get rid of all the of all the aggressive nature. Just like fish shouldn't be fishy, well, game shouldn't be game. And by getting rid of that blood, 90% of the people who have issues with uh, game meat because of aggressive flavor, it's because it's too fresh. Wow. Well, we've been schooled. <laughs> Take a minute and tell us about your product lineup. Well, we have uh, we have six different uh, seasonings, and. Um, they are all very low in salt. We use basically, I've collected the finest ingredients from around the world. And uh, they, are, they are designed to complement the natural integrity and flavor of uh, wild game meat when it's properly taken care of. They're not the culinary band-aids. They don't make the, the bad stuff go away. They're there to basically complement and, and let them meet their maximum potential. We have our uh, juniper berry and peppercorn steak rub, which is uh, one of our more popular ones. Um, we've made lots and lots of friends with that over yeah. the years. Uh, that's got a really nice balance of uh, refreshing juniper and earthy peppercorns, which match up really well with the strong flavored game meats. We have our San Francisco seafood rub, which is, um, I like to refer to it as a West Coast version of a blackened seasoning. I like the idea of blackening, but a mouthful of screaming hot cayenne pepper doesn't seem to make very much sense to me. So, in fact, there's no cayenne in our seasonings. Okay. Um, I replaced the cayenne with ancho chili, which has a really sweet, mild pepper flavor, so that when you, you put it on a delicate piece of fish, you can actually still taste the fish. Uh, we have our, our newest one is our Wild Eats Burger Dust, which is a roasted garlic, roasted onion, and black pepper rub. And you can pretty much put that on, I mean, what, what does garlic and onion not go with? So that one that one's pretty universal. Our uh, waterfowl rub is a ginger, citrus, and pepper rub. And I combine the flavors of ginger, which has a really refreshing quality, with a little bit of the, the pungency and, and acidity of uh, citrus peel, and then a little splash of uh, allspice, which gives it almost a Caribbean kind of a flavor, so very refreshing. Um, our control burn chili blend uh, is what we serve at this show, and uh, we've won, won a whole lot of awards with that. And, have served thousands and thousands it of gallons incredible. of that. It tastes wonderful. That's a blend of five different peppers and chilies, and um, I cook up at the Bohemian Grove, which is a private men's club up on the Russian River, and 
We have literally served over 10,000 gallons of that chili over the last wow. 16 years up there for the, the folks up there. So it's a, it's, it's, we refer to that as our Bohemian Venison Chili Recipe. Um, we also have uh, lemon garlic and sage rub with fennel, uh, which is our upland bird and, uh, and poultry uh, seasoning. It's got a terrific brine recipe. And uh, a little goes a long way. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of salt in there. We only use sea salt. So uh, we're out here amongst the crowd making friends and uh, watching these people come back and tell me their stories about how they've enjoyed what we've shared with them. And you are popular here. Oh, uh, It's funny how that happens yes, when you yes. feed people. Without a doubt. <laughs> Chef John, if I want to buy this, how do I get a hold of you to buy it? Well, you can come here to the ISE show or you can go to wildeats.com, which is my, our website. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a wild game cooking blog. I have a recipe collection. There's some videos. There's all kinds. I'm working on an ebook, which is going to be our our next application, my first book, which was based on the TV series. I, I sold out of that, and the where, where we're going in technology, I think e-booking is the way to go. I could basically create a bottomless book, and just, you sign up for the book, and, and then I just keep adding a chapter a month, and it's true. It's just, uh, you know, knowledge is power. I'll be able to get it on my iPad. There you go. All right. E exactly. Chef John, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks and for having appreciate me. Appreciate it. And that's Cooking Everything Outdoors with Chef John McGannon. Wild Eats, so go visit them. It's good stuff. We've just been schooled. There you go. <laughs>